So, yeah, thanks for agreeing to talk to me. I'm a big fan of your music, so I'm just going to get that out of the way straight away. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate but that. But it's all uh, it's all very new, isn't it? Like, it's only been a couple of years, but things seem to be just happening really fast for you. Has it taken you by surprise? Yeah, I mean, definitely in the beginning, you know, with, like, the first EP and releasing the, those songs, releasing Places, Plans, I was very much taken aback by the sort of speed with which everything came together career-wise because I was sort of expecting to just be kind of doing it part-time you know in on the side of things for a while and it ended up sort of becoming more of the central thing that I was doing more immediately um I think that at this point I think just because everything happened really fast I feel like I've been doing it for longer and maybe I think with COVID as well that the the couple of years like sort of felt like really long you know (laughs) um so yeah at this point I feel like I've been doing it but I so I feel a little bit more like I have a hold on things but in the beginning it was definitely like it was a lot It, it took me some time to adjust so I never ask people this question because it's such a cliched question um but with you I really want to know Where did this name come from? Um, well, it, it has well, kind of a long answer, um, but has become a very relevant question and one that I enjoy answering because I think that the main kind of goal with the name is to kind of contextualize the music with something that wouldn't that sort of allows the music to have um a meaning that maybe wouldn't otherwise be very apparent um with the sound and with the kind of visuals um and and yeah I think that meaning is to just give it this sort of power and this sort of aggression that often gets um questioned or like people you know people are just like well, you know that doesn't make sense to have like this sort of like scary sounding name go with this like really beautiful music and I think that you know maybe that's also a cliche but I think that it's one that like rings true for my life and for for me and just the things that I'm drawn to um is that there's often you know a lot of kind of power and aggression and Um, intensity and ugliness uh, within things that might, you know, seem maybe soft and meek and, um, you know, quiet. And, and, you know, there's this, just this sort of like duality that exists, like in a lot of the ideas that I'm, that I'm talking about. um, And, you know, just like how I view myself. And I think that Skull Crusher as a name, like people, it's funny because people who know me really well, when I called myself that, they were like, oh yeah, that makes sense for you. <laughs> um, but people who don't know me are like, I don't get that. Um, so it's kind of just like giving, like exposing something about me that like maybe wouldn't otherwise be noticeable um, in kind of an extreme and like sort of fun, sort of goofy way. You know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a band name at the end of the day, which I feel like you can have fun with and you can, you know, be like a little bit more performative and a little bit more extreme. And I feel like there's definitely a little bit of like a wink in that name as well. So it's not completely serious, but that's kind of the, you know, that's the serious answer. And then the kind of like fun kind of aspect of just being able to like take on a role for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting because th- that completely makes sense to me, especially after I've kind of listened to the music properly. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if you just have it on in the background, like you might kind of want to put those two things and question them. But sure. when I've spoken to people about your music, I'm like, I had to listen to this album by Skull Crusher. I always feel like I need to add, it's not what you think it's going to be from yeah. the name. <laughs> I know it's, it's definitely been it, like in the beginning, it was kind of 
I was like, oh, what have I done? Because I sort of had to just like always have this explanation ready for people. And there were a lot of people being like, oh, I thought this was going to be something else. And, you know, but I think that that's kind of part of it. And that's sort of like been, I don't know, it sort of helped the project to grow into what it is to like have to explain that and have to sort of be like, well, you know, listen to it again. And, you know, it'll make sense eventually. And just be patient. And some people are going to be like, not into it. And that's fine. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And I know you said that you've taken inspiration for for this artwork in particular from your childhood. Mm. Now, a lot of people might hear that and think of a certain thing, which is not really what this album's about. So when did the inspiration of your childhood kind of start filtering through into the music? Well, I think that when I am in a creative space and I'm like sort of trying to channel some kind of emotion or something that I'm experiencing, I tend to kind of go into this very like liminal sort of space that's kind of tied to like, you know, certain like struggles that I have and, you know, just just sort of more like emotionally vulnerable spaces in my in, in myself. And I think that the more that I kind of became familiar with those spaces, the more that I was curious about how they developed. And I think that that kind of like led me to sort of connect with um, a lot of memories and a lot of like aspects of my upbringing, um, which sort of provided a kind of insight into to where my creative practice comes from and where and just like how I've developed as a person, you know, so it's, it's kind of just like naturally surfaces when I'm honing in on, on an idea or just questioning myself, you know, wondering like, why, you know, why do I feel this particular way? Or like, why do I behave this way? Um, And oftentimes, you know, you are going to think about your upbringing and your childhood and your parents and, you know, what, what was going on and why did that, kind of why did I make certain choices why how did I end up here kind of thing so I mean I think it's just a lot of like this process of like self-reflection and um and yeah self-actualization just like this ongoing process that I would have would be doing I think regardless of like if I was making music but I think for me that process is like very tied to writing and that's just how it ends up being communicated so it it was less that I was like, oh, I want to think about my childhood. It was more just like, this is what I think about when I'm going in to my emotional depths. And, and that's just kind of what surfaced. And a lot of, and a lot of the images that come up with me surrounding these feelings are very tied to my childhood. So yeah. And, and um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I can, be a little bit more specific if you want but that's sort of the general whatever you're happy to share is <laughs> is of interest to me but it's completely up to you where you want to go with that but maybe maybe tell me about the first song that you wrote for the album yeah so the first song I wrote without well the first song I wrote technically was quiet the room which I wrote before I knew I was writing an album so it was kind of just a song I wrote while I was writing, I, you know, I think it was around the time I wrote Farm and Song for Nick Drake. And I, and I sort of like put it aside because I was like, I think this is maybe something for later. Like it just felt like a different, um, a different thought. And so I put sort of put it aside and then came back to it when I was, when I knew I was going to be writing an album. And I was like, I feel like that's, you know, that's the jumping off point. And then I wrote They Quiet the Room because I was like half kind of just like trying to remember it because I hadn't played it in a while because it was like a year later and I had a guitar there so I was like I'll just I remember the words so I'll just kind of like write it again or something and then it became like this sort of other version of it so those like two songs slash one song that kind of represents the the first yeah step of the album um and and I mean, there's definitely a connection to to the fact that I wrote it on piano. I wrote it 
at my mom's house. I wrote it at the piano that I kind of grew up playing on. And so there was, there was an kind of just, I was just in the space of like sort of connecting with my childhood self in a way. And I think that that song, yeah, was the beginning of this sort of investigation into how my upbringing and how, you know, the circumstances of my childhood have um, affected me and made me into who I am. And, and yeah, it's, it's just sort of like the, those initial questions that I was maybe asking myself and asking family members and asking people around me, which sort of opened the door to, to, yeah, the rest of the album. You mentioned you wrote this on the piano Mm -hmm. and that's tied, tied to your childhood was, was where did music begin with you in your childhood? What's the first musical memory you can remember? Um, well, it's hard because, like, you know, I see videos and I have, home, you know, home footage. And so a lot of times like that will get, I'm like not sure if it's a memory, if it's just something that I've seen. But um, I remember just always kind of being drawn to playing instruments and playing piano. You know, the the song Whistle of the Dead, which is like a little instrumental track on the album that is just audio pulled from a home recording of me um probably when i'm four or five and just like banging on a piano and like making some words (laughs) um so you know i just have memories of that but mainly like that piano in my living room and I just, I don't know, I do have a, I do have a lot of like very visceral memories of like what it felt like to sit at the piano and I would always sit on my knees and like my knees would get like, I would, my legs would hurt after a while, but I would always sit like, yeah, like not normally on the seat. And then, and then I just remember kind of the feeling of like not knowing how to play piano and like wanting to, but still wanting to make something. And I, and that that's really interesting to me. And I think that that really like has influenced me as an artist, just, you know, the kind of creativity that can come from like not really knowing how to do something or not knowing how something works. But there, and I think that's what really interests me about like children in general, just, just this capacity for creativity without the skills. <laughs> and yeah. Um, yeah, and I just remember like trying, you know, having this sensation of like wanting to make something and having no idea and the, and the piano is just this mystery it's like this like because you don't know how it works it's like this magical thing that you just you don't know and it makes something and I think that I just kind of like remember that sensation and then uh, just yeah. like bang, banging on it basically it's quite freeing to create something without the rules that have already been put in place by other people right Yeah, I think that as much as you can sort of maintain a balance between, I don't know, like I try to sort of bring that to what I do now, even though obviously like I know how to like use it properly, but, you know, I try to sort of retain some of the the mystery and the, um, yeah, the the experimentation that can come from, from not knowing how. And, And after that, did you take lessons or you just taught yourself? I did take lessons. I was made to take lessons. Um, made yeah, to take I, lessons. I made to take lessons. <laughs> um, you know, it's good. I mean, it's good. My, yeah, my, my parents, you know, they were like, okay, you're going to, you like that? You're going to take lessons. Um, so I started lessons when I was five, piano lessons, um, which I really hated for a bit. And then they were like, okay, well, you can do it until you're, you or you have to do it until you're, in like fifth grade or so and then you can not do it anymore if you don't want to but then by that point I was like I like doing it so I kept doing it um so just quickly like you obviously were drawn to the piano yeah then you hated the lessons what do you think why do you think that was as a kid I really just disliked any type of like obligation or like lesson like I really struggled to just do like classes or sports or organized things (laughs) 
you know, I think it's like, I think it's, there's a lot of reasons, you know, I was like more, I was just more comfortable um, without structure as a kid. And I think, you know, my anxiety was like beginning to develop and I, yeah, I was really nervous a lot of the time and I didn't really understand why. And I was very nervous to, to go have to like, you know, show up and talk to people and be doing expected to to do things um, and very hesitant to do things. But I think with something like piano lessons and some that, like, I remember like fighting about it, but I, but I also remember like kind of secretly liking it. And um, I think I didn't like learning music theory, but as soon, once I got to a point where I could just, where I was more able to just like learn songs that I liked and be able to learn those songs and be able to sing along to those songs. I really loved it. And I liked learning actually like some classical music. I did like that. Um, And I just liked the, like practicing by myself and, you know, and I had some really amazing teachers as well who were kind of similar to me. And I think like had saw, like saw bits of themselves in me and I was able to like feel comfortable with them. Um, but I just remember in the beginning being like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Were you listening to a lot of music during your childhood? Was it an escape for you? Yeah, definitely. I, yeah, like in middle school, I mean, I would say there, there were kind of like two, well, kind of like I was influenced by my mom and then my dad. And then I was influenced and then just like kind of eventually was like finding music on my own. But from my dad it was like kind of more like you know 60s 70s like rock and folk music so it was like that's how I learned like Joni Mitchell and you know I was I was like really obsessed with the Beatles in middle school um which is probably a pretty common situation but I, not I maybe so. in my but maybe not at a young yeah, age I think I felt a little bit weird well I definitely felt weird about it but I was really obsessed with the Beatles and I was like, really like, I, I think I just was drawn to bands where I could really kind of like get immersed in the world. And I think because the Beatles had such like a visual world too, that like they eventually established with like the films that they did and, you know, like the B side of Abbey Road, like being this sort of like continuous, um, like cinematic feeling you know that was that's like really appealing to me so as a kid I would really kind of be able to like escape into that and I was like really I could I could like sing through the entire thing and like I would like just remember like sitting in the back seat of the car and just like imagining like a whole visual world to (laughs) the Beatles um and then from my mom's side kind of similarly it was like Coldplay I was really into and like Beck and Madonna and got more interested in like dance music and kind of like euphoric soundscapes and production um you know Viva La Vida came out when I was in eighth grade and I was obsessed with it and then I later learned that it was like produced by John Hopkins and Brian Eno and I was like okay like you know this is it like makes sense with just sort of like the electronic kind of music that I'm into and also yeah. very cinematic, very like, yeah, visual. And- you name it, a lot of artists I'm a big fan of as well, especially <laughs> John Hopkins I love as well. Yeah, I love John Hopkins. So just to, just to wrap it up, we need to talk to, about you coming to Montreal, which I'm very pleased yeah. that you come in because you're not doing a ton of dates, but Montreal is one of them. You're going to be at Barleritz in November. Yep. And and Beethoven's going to be playing with you. They have an album out today. Oh yeah, it is out today. Yeah. So um awesome. so it's it's a good time. At, like do these songs change in a life environment? Some of them do, yeah. I I try to be pretty open to um just yeah, every show being different and every lineup being different. Um you know, every chance, every time that you play a song, it's just going to be a little bit different. So I'm not definitely not tied 100% to the recordings. 
Well, I'm I'm going to be there, so I'm very much looking forward exciting. to it. Exciting, yeah, I'm really excited um, to be there. Seeing it. Yeah, and uh, congratulations on all this. What's happening with you? Like it, it's it's happening happening fast, and I hope it continues to uh, keep up at this pace. And I hope it doesn't overwhelm you. <laughs> yeah, um, trying to keep me keep a handle on it. Yeah, but thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll see you in November. You'll see me in November. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Ellen. Bye.